Whereas for Mason, it's the possibility of being able to win this thing outright. All right, so they roll off. Nine for Mason. And only a four for Brandon. Okay, so Mason's gonna go in first. Uh, Brandon, as we know, is running his uh, Chrome Host Seed Shark Gold Vein Hydra Brew. It's a lot of wheels and fast spawn shenanigans. Mason is on a low blue creature. It has a, it has a random yeah, package in it as well. So Mason is uh, looks like he has reanimate fairy sure mastermind, Gitaxian Pro to start. So we get to see everything. Mystical Zurin Orb, ancestral. So, I don't know what that left card is. Uh, there is an Ancestral in hand, though. So, Mason's starting off with a double Gitaxian probe hand via the Street Wraith. Uh, has a Git, has a uh, Jace Vryn's Prodigy sitting there in the middle, ready to go. Oh man, Mike is cheering for Dan. Dan is on his way to being number one right here. He has a very good chance of winning this thing, especially when he started off like 3-0. It was a ridiculous start for him. Uh, his deck looks very good, though. It's super aggressive, very similar to Cody's. Uh, they kind of split the red-white space. Okay, so Brandon's going to start off with Island into Zoran Orb. Uh, and, okay, I think it's Provisioner that he has there in his hand. So the Provisioner is uh, it's an interesting card. It's called Tireless Provisioner that allows for you to get more food tokens or treasure tokens, depending on what you need. So I assume he's going to wait to cast this Ancestral until upkeep, maybe? Um, I don't know if Mason has any cards that make it relevant to cast it there, but I don't know if he's waiting until end of turn to cast the Ancestral. Or possibly waiting to see if he wants the Mystical or Ancestral. There's a Jason play. Uh, he's going to go for the Ancestral instead of the Mystical, which makes a ton of sense. Okay, uh, we're 90% sure. Uh, keep... Rolling's on the floor, so you're going to be able to mark it ahead. He's possibly going to be going into a uh, mystical and upkeep. We'll see. He just drawn. Uh, he drew off the ancestral, uh, so he has a ton of cards in hand. Uh, it looks like Mason has Jason's friend's prodigy after double uh, Gitaxian probing. He has a time walk, uh, a Teferi, and a fairy mastermind, and a reanimate in hand. So Mason ended up taking down Adam. I know that was a close match. So yeah. that's. Ooh, look at what we just drew. Is he gonna do it? He's missed. I think he drew it. Oh, he drew it naturally for his turn. He didn't even bat a mystical. Yeah, he's just decided if he's going to miracle it or not at this point. How could he? He doesn't. He only has one mana. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought I thought those were mana down there. I didn't. No, I, no. Yeah, that's, that's his hand. Okay, he's just playing his hand up. I didn't catch that part. So. And he does not have the brainstorm, right? He's a brainstorm. Okay. Yeah. So he, he might just be holding it to push it away. Um, maybe he was hoping to uh, mystical for the. Mystical for it next turn, right. and that's why he's frustrated. I mean, I don't think Mystical for it right now does that much. It ramps you up, right? I mean, it just seems like you'd rather brainstorm it later. All right, so he's going to play one of the known lands. So he plays the uh, the pain land. Yeah. The... Whatever we call it, the crack land, whatever. Right. He also has a mental mystic in hand, which is pretty strong. So that's the JVP. Okay, I couldn't tell what that was. Yes, JVP is resolved, and Teferi's going to be coming next turn. Okay. Assuming Mason actually has a white source, which I don't see one. I see a forest. Yes. So I don't. I think that the Teferi won't be happening next turn. What is happening here? I need to discard to. Hand oh, discard to hand size. Okay. Okay, so it's probably going to be either a time walk or more likely a fairy mastermind this turn. And then yeah, from Brandon's side, he has a lot of things going on, but nothing that uh, is really pressuring yet. Yeah, this matchup feels awkward for Brandon. Like um. The, the hand hate, the, just enough counter spells, the, the removal. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's meant to uh, miss that yeah, he's, he's already revealed. Like, that's uncomfortable as fuck. Like, is there a little I'm letting him handle it, but. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, I do think Mason has just set it and grabbed, but right. we'll see what happens. Cody's handling the. Yeah, gonna, he's, Cody's going to have it shuffle yeah. and just yeah. redo it all. Yeah. Yeah, this is this feels like the best case scenario. Yeah. So, as a reminder, at St. Lotus we play at Don't Be a Dick Ariel, which largely means that if you have to call a judge in, they'll resolve it in a competitive Ariel format. Uh, but for players mostly just want to make sure nobody's 
being rude to each other. Um, we're not as worried about cheating here as you are in an open tournament because right. we have an all invite only tournament. There is a white sword, it was a flood strain that was just drawn off of the loot. And then he pitched the. Yeah, there's the flooded strand. Yeah, he drew that off the loot off the JVP. Nice. And pitched the forest to it. And fetching for shock, presumably, so he can do the death shadow. Although death shadow is not in the main deck, right? Yeah, not so. in the main deck, so no, okay. no game one. Which are the status of Escape 3 and the other one because it's a biggie. Yeah. Love it. As long as you're out there, uh, you can grab some beverages. Yes, yes, yes. Do you want one of those or do you want uh, the Whatever you want. All right. All right, so Shuffle found the untapped fetch land. Mason's already down to 13 despite having done literally no damage from Brandon. This is the, the benefits of Gataxi and Proven Street Wraith. Uh, plus all these fetch lands. Mason is, at his core, a Death Shadow deck uh, that happens to be able to side into that. So in game one, he'll be using Reanimate and being able to bring things out uh, in that direction. Um, so starting at 13 life is actually pretty relevant because it puts pressure on his ability to resolve something like an Archon of Cruelty or a uh, Drizzlebrand. Now, Brandon is... Uh, is mysticaling. Normally the thing you'd mystical for is the time walk, but that has already happened. The second thing you'd mystical for is the ancestral recall, but that has already happened. So, uh, open season on what he can take. Brainstorm be pretty strong, uh, but it's not particularly, he's not setting up anything. There's nothing in his hand he needs to put back on top of his library to miracle or anything like that. He's not running a vanishment or a devastation tide. Uh, Jay's friend's prodigy is going to flip next turn, so he needs to figure out an answer to that. He also needs to start putting some kind of uh, some kind of directional pressure on the board. So he's going to find the time twister. That is a way of stopping the Jay's friend's prodigy from twist from uh, turning over, but it doesn't do a whole lot to actually apply pressure. And it hands back the turn to Mason with a full hand. Uh, and I don't know, maybe Brandon has the ability to get a mox off of it, a mox into fast foundry, pretty strong. Uh, Brandon doesn't have a mox, so yeah, I think he's going to be passing the turn regardless at the end of this if he chooses to cast the time uh, to choose to cast time twister. Yeah, time twister here would be pretty aggressive. Um, not to say that it's incorrect. Okay, he's just going to pass the turn, so maybe he has a hull breacher in hand or something. Very mastermind he gets passed by Mason. Uh, that cares about the second spell cast, I believe. Let's double check that though. There's a lot of these uh, things that trigger, and I always mix up which one's which. So, yes, this one cares when they draw their second card, then you get to draw a card. It's also just a straight up 2 1 flyer flash. So, Takahashi can crash in here for two. We do have a Hall Breacher uh, getting activated, getting cast in response to the Jace. It's pretty good at stopping the draw off of the Jace, so he's going to be. Not drawing, giving Mason a tre or giving uh, Brandon a treasure, and then Mason will have to discard a card. So, about as aggressively good as you can get. So, well played, Brandon. Heads up play to keep that mana open. It also then sets up a really killer turn next turn where he gets to cast the Time Twister it, with the Hull Reacher in play. And at that point, it's effectively game over. Um, because even the Fairy Mastermind trigger won't happen, it will just end up in Brandon receiving another treasure. So. Jace does flip, though, which is nice. Kind of gets this turn to do something. Otherwise, the game's over. I don't know if he's going to be reanimating it. Okay, he's time walking. Good good start to this. Then on his time walk turn, he'll flash back the time walk, almost assuredly. Okay, so he's reanimating the Street Wraith. Attacking for two, putting Brandon to 16, uh, threatening to put him to 11, then threatening to put him to five, or put him to uh, six. So if nothing else happens, Brandon is at six, getting the turn passed back to him. But hopefully, from Mason's side of the board, he's going to be drawing something to be able to put more pressure on here. So we know he has Teferi in hand. Uh, Teferi can bounce the, the Hull Breacher, but that doesn't do a whole lot other than set the turn back one more. Um, it's still 
it might be enough to tempo him out. I think that's Mason's plan here, is just to try to tempo out all these little interactions. Um, get the time walk to happen again. Uh, that does mean that Teferi's not going to be happening, but at least it means that there's going to be a... Uh, there, there's going to be another turn of crashing for damage. And Brandon is not going to be trading off his Hall Breacher here. It's, even if he could, it wouldn't be worth it. Uh, and at this point, it's just a chump block. Brandon also has a ton of life to play with because he has a Zoran Orb sitting in play. So if he needs to, he can always sacrifice off these lands. He doesn't want to, obviously, but it's not something that he is uh, going to die one life or something like that. Okay, so bouncing the Hall Breacher makes sense. This does mean that Mason does get an extra draw out of it, which is unusual given that there's a Hall Breacher in play, but because he gets to bounce the Hall Breacher before the draw spell happens, it's pretty convenient. He crashes in for five, putting Brandon to six, and I think he just drew a Thought Scour? No. I think he drew a, uh, a Troll of Khazadum, which means he'll be able to go find a land. Not the most strong. And I, that's also a... Yeah, so he's cycling Troll of Khazadum. He also has a uh, Hymn to Turok in hand, which would be very good if he could cast it, but he's pretty far from casting it. So, passing the turn back. Brandon got put, pressured a lot in his life total, so Fast Bond can't go as crazy. But And he also isn't doesn't have enough mana to be able to Hull Breacher into Time Twister unless he drew a Crystal Vein, which I imagine he would throw on the table in Delight. So I don't see a Crystal Vein here. Uh, Brandon is probably at least one one turn away, and if he does nothing, the he's gonna be pressured for five damage again. So he needs to he needs to start making something happen here. Tireless Provisioner is a card that he could cast, but it doesn't do any kind of real work. He also can't hold up the Hull Breacher. He needs to cast it now if he wants it because there's a Teferi in play, which opens it to sorcery speed removal and all sorts of other problems. It's not ideal, but I think it's probably the best play he has, at least what I see. Oh, taking one life, because he has the land that pains him. Uh, making a Tellers Provisioner. So this actually does mean that that's the reason why he couldn't do it. Oh, he has a land. Okay, so the land drop gives him another treasure. So now he's up to three mana. So if he wants to, he can cast the Hull Breacher. And then he can uh, he can cast the Hull Breacher and then block with the Tireless Provisioner to keep himself alive. Dan got away. Dan beat Elaine. Okay, this... this we're going to swap over, even though this is actually a pretty exciting game that's happening here, we're going to swap over to the standings a minute to see what that did. Uh, that means that Elaine is no longer in the X1 bracket and is me meeting the other people down in the muck. So Dan, yeah. Mason, and Elaine are all down in the X2 bracket. And Cody still has to play Elaine. Correct. And could end up <laughs> in the same amount of muck, right? Oh, like man. It's going to end up with a four-way tie for first place. So what you missed, Mason cast Time, tw time Walk twice putting Brandon for 5 damage each time, so uh -huh. dealing 15 damage to Brandon. Brandon had to cast Tireless Provisioner, taking 1 damage down to 5, which would be lethal, but then also was able to use the treasure token off the land drop to be able to recast his Hull Breacher that got bounced by, G by Teferi. So, now he can chump block with the Tireless Tracker, or Tireless Provisioner, on the Street Wraith, in order to be able to, because he has a time twister in his hand that Mason already knows about. But there's a, just a hymn just went off. A hymn went off. Did it, we'll have to see if they hit the time twister. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's in his hand. I don't know how many cards are in his hand. Enough. Three. 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 Oh. There's one card that That's he his can keep. keep. So you just said point to the keep? No, I saw a time twister fly past. Yeah, twister goes. Okay, so that, that that's a pretty brutal one. And Bombardier was doing it. Broadside Bombardiers was doing it again, man. Always does. Yeah, oh my God, the card's been so clutch for him today. Yes. If you want to see all the deck lists and everything, I'm just gonna link it in chat here. Uh, and similarly, the standings are all right there as well. So, oh, double he, block. He had a double block. Yeah. So that puts another three. He can't tap his pain land again, because if he does, he just dies to the attack in the air. Teferi is inching its way up, so in two turns, it feels like Mason has the hooks in at this point, but... Yeah. Man, losing the losing that Hall Breacher shots off a lot, of, a lot of extra lines. Yeah. But Mason has just tempoed him out really well this match. Being able to flip the Jace uh, into, into the double time walk has really changed the game. Because Brandon actually had a pretty heads-up play where 
Mason activated the Jace. Brandon flashed in the Hull Breacher to get the treasure and force Mason to d- d- discard a card. Nice. But yeah, just got bounced by the bounced by the Teferi after Jace got the double time walk. There's no treasure, he says. Okay. Two mana. Goosh. Gushin. Good. Mason gets to draw one off the fairy mastermind. Yeah. Because he's only... Uh... Uh, it looks like a chrome host, seed shark, and a ponder that he drew. Seed shark blocks. He doesn't have, but he's got Teferi at... No, he and doesn't have... Teferi's only at two. Right. So unless he's got another... Like, seed shark can block. It's easy. And he has two mana floating, I believe. On a one mana floating, it looks like. Or possibly one treasure? I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, he, the land drops. There's the... Okay. Right. Maybe this is a food token that he made? Nah, it's probably a treasure. I'm guessing. Yeah. So that's with the two floating. Okay. So that makes the seed shark. The land drop made a treasure, probably? Yeah, the land drop made Oh, a good. Okay, so he's killing the Teferi. Yeah. I mean, Leaving I mean, his Jason Plum. I mean, it could be the food, but I think... He might have gone food. Uh, yeah, he, he died killing because he pointed to the Jace. He rolled the Jace on the Teferi, so on the tireless. He gave it minus two, so oh, it just, okay, just dropped okay. it to one. I mean, sense. it keeps it in check, which sure. is... There's the trophy. Yeah. Does Brandon have the daze? He does. I think he has a daze in hand. So he can make an incubator token if he wants to. This is still game one. This is a this is a fantastic match. All these games today have been yeah, very it's... intense. We haven't had any good blow He uses the treasure for the days. Makes an incubator. But he's got a tap two to flip an incubator, so it's not just... Yes, it's not free. Right. But, I mean, it is a 3-3. Three, three. It, it doesn't fly or anything, correct? Yeah. So he he paid the one, obviously. So it's still resolved, but he gets, he gets a land. Why doesn't he get the land? I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so... Okay, okay. Yeah, he gets yeah, the land. Yeah. Is he saying he doesn't get the token? I'm not sure. I'm confused. I'm gonna go ask what happened there. Yeah. Because that, that feels yeah. like he should have gotten the token. Right. <clears throat> We're gonna hit the uh we used to have a blow dryer that we put out there that we had on a remote control that we would hit and when uh stuff like that would happen when we needed a Uh-huh. Uh, Days would have gotten the token, but there's a Teferi in play, and Teferi says that you can't, can't cast it. Can't Days. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's, yeah, it's Everyone's really Monday. Yeah. Yes. To be clear, we started the draft uh, about 10 hours ago, yeah. so that's the spot we're in. We had a four-hour draft, and yeah. now we're at this point. It's always fun to watch the finals, where people are just playing like garbage against each other, because right. they've been playing yeah. for 12 hours. Yeah. And I, we've been going pretty steady of pace lately, but we have some methodical players in this one that kind of, yeah. you know, and, and, and it was a tough draft, right? And uh, and none of the decks are just like linear. Right. All the decks have tons of interaction. Like, Dan's the only one who spent through his games because he's just like, oh, I'm just angry. Yeah, yeah, Kyle. Kyle was done too. Yeah, Kyle got to it pretty quick. Kyle got done after like three hours in the left. Uh, nah, it wasn't that fast, but no, <laughs> it was, yeah. Okay, another uh, flashback on the Hymn to Turok. We know that he has a day's left in hand. Yeah. Yikes. Okay, so Jace, is, Jace didn't plus this turn and is at two. I mean, he's got a Zeron Orb, so he can stay alive if he wants to stay alive, right? Like, no, so one of those were was a food. They're both food. Okay, tokens. there we go. He's been making food. That makes sense. And there's no incubator tokens in play. Right. So we flash back to him, so this time uh, Tyre is active for damage. Correct. So yeah, hopefully... Oh, he's flashing instant speed on draw step uh, to get rid of the days. Yep, going down to six. I, Brandon has not yet dealt damage to Mason, and Mason is at six. So four. <laughs> All right, well, there's a land. That's a food token. Correct. I mean, 
I think you're still fresher than walkers, but at this point, it's got to feel uh, like you want to start yeah. killing it. Yeah, you know, you got to kill that JVP thing. Yeah, Jace is dead. This is wild. It really is. I did not anticipate, and that Charles Provisioner. I thought it was terrible all day. Yeah, Provisioner's a good card, it's been, man. It's it's been grinding. As long as you can stay alive for yeah. it to grind value. I'm going right here. All right, you're you're all done, right? Five I'm and done. two. All right. They're playing all right, CVH. Yeah. We have Dan joining us in the booth. Is Cody and Elaine start their game? Yes, they have started. Okay. Hi, everybody. We have. Bye, oh, everybody. that's an animate dead on the Archon of Cruelty. <laughs> Yeah, that seems pretty. That seems pick like up. pick up the game. Yeah, pick up the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. There it is. All right, so yeah. that gives Mason, Mason one victory point. Yeah. Left winner. Man. Okay, so let's check Doug up over to the deck list and see if they have what what they're going to be going for here. All right, uh, Brandon. Um, you know, I mean, mill plan seems. So Parth, he keeps the reanimate in. Um, Crucible of Worlds is pretty good. Just yeah. doubling up on that. Yeah, doubling up the Crucible seems fine. Is uh, Nature's Le I mean, Leyline, if he wants to mole for the Leyline, mm -hmm. he seems fine. But, uh, I mean, we could also see... Uh, Mason is pretty straight up su stra subbed out game two the uh, reanimate package every time. Yeah, he yes. did that to me as well. I think he I brought in her, so I'm like, this is sad. Yeah. Yeah, he seems to always go for Co Cody brought in Rip and uh, uh, Lion Sash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lion Sash can still be yeah, Lion Sash can, can still be right. but Rip is actual yeah. Rip. Yeah, 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 not doing anything with it. Spellcaller's very good here. Yeah. Leovold's really good here. Maelstrom Pulse is pretty good. Yeah, I think he sides it out again. I mean... Uh, actually, Maelstrom Pulse doesn't do a lot. It's fine. I mean, it could clear a whole bunch of tokens. It could clear... Leovold is very Leovold's good. ridiculous, yeah. Mastermind's good. Wait, he played Mastermind in game one. Something must have slipped there. Yeah, let's I'll check what that's supposed to be. What's this what's this thing at? Oh, uh, what do you mean? What's his deck total? Is it is it just a mistake and his deck's listed as thirty nine maybe? Uh I don't know where to find it again. Oh it's up at the top. Sure. No, it's at forty. Okay. Huh. I, I think he just probably forgot to slide it out. That's fine. So how goes the commentator's days? It's going pretty well. So we have a... Let's see. I did what I needed to do, because that I needed to win that game yeah, to give course. everyone else a chance. Otherwise, Elaine could have gone right. X1. Yeah, so Dan, you're, you're here. The standings look great for you. I, I did beat both Elaine and Mason. You're, yeah. you're in the big soup of people that are in the first place. Contention. So how do the tiebreakers work? Because I think I, I, have the, I would have beaten all of the other X2s. Uh, so tiebreakers are that if there are people tied with the same match record, they play it to see who wins. Ooh. Yes. Mason's had I, don't, I don't I don't want to do with the grinds again. Time. He okay. just his list was an error, so he's just gonna he's gonna check his list and fix it. Got it. Yes, so well, Steven's back. It's like I've had it in there every time. Oh my god, I believe you. I've seen it <laughs> I've seen you cast it like a million times today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what are you guys' overall impression of this VRD, supposedly the Tournament of Champions, it, compared to past I mean, ones? it's just a very solid, sloggy... It was interesting. It ended up very mid-rangey, right? Like, yes, it was, like, I'm even, a big blue component, yeah. and there was... I'm, like, telling them, like, there's not a lot of blue. There's no counters going, those cantrips yeah. going, but yet there's four blue decks. Yeah. But yep. they don't feel blue. I mean, even, uh, even Varner's deck, like, which has the instant win things mm -hmm. it's still kind of mid-rangey version exactly, of that right absolutely. Like, it's the most mid-rangey thoracle you know right. but yeah it was it was interesting to see like almost the disrespect on blue but still being respected it was, it was weird yeah but uh i do think mid-range and just permanents in general are just so powerful right now that you just get them out before they have the mana to counter something and they don't have the free counters they can just steamroll the game yeah this is one one i would like to play in because these are all my style of decks right <laughs> like, you know. i would love to play a combo deck in this field because yeah. everyone's playing bad decks and combo is great we're killing them all yeah. <laughs> they're not bad decks right. these, these decks are very good at stopping the aggro decks that you need to be able to stop because the two red white decks mm -hmm. that you both have are like not so fast right. they're really good I, I think, uh... But yeah, I mean, you, it doesn't matter if I go fast. If you... You can just take 15 damage. Like, oh, oops, you're dead. I have no interaction. I have one power blast. I board in. Cool. Yep. I think the flash deck would have been really good. Not flash the card, but flash the mechanic deck. Would have oh, been really good in this field. I played that in Legacy. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think the flash dot deck would have been really, really good in this Now you're talking about flash, like, 
kind of mono blue. You're taking like Esper like with like White Blue Master and like Ninja Creature yeah. and all those. Not even just Ninja, just like White Blue, like uh, the the Angel one yeah. that lets you play Pop flashcards. And... Spirits or ninjas are right. the decks we're No, about. Cunning Knight Bonder. Does that yeah. make it? It could. Yeah. You I love that card. card. That card is uh, gas. But like uh, Giarda and whatever, the one that lets you play flash creatures off the top of your library. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, Slither Wisp as well. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely play a version of that in Legacy. It's not good right now, but I, I still like memeing with it. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you also get a lot of the counter magic, and you get the Tidebinder. Yeah, yes, and, yes. Know. Well, Tidebinder's not so, like, yeah. how that fell as far as it did. Oh, it's very good. It's a okay, so they're shuffling up right now, so we're about to start the next one. Yeah. All right. So. Well, I'll uh, let you guys to it. Good. Thanks for having me. I'm in. Yeah. I'm going to wait to see how it falls. We'll see you in finals. All right. I uh, see a Force of Will and a Hex Drinker in Brandon's hand. I don't see a lot of lands, though. I see oh, an there's two. There's an island. An island and a Lorien revealed. Okay. And well. a second island. So he has two yeah. islands and a Lorien revealed. And then Mason has a full has a, a double redraw. Is that a recall at the end or an island at the end there? That's an island. Okay. Yeah, Mason has a Gitaxian Probe. Oh, there's a Time Walk. Yeah, it is. And a Street Wraith. I see some... Okay, Island, Force of Will. I don't see. What's the second card there? Oh, Misstep. Island, okay. Misstep, Force of Will. Hex Drinker. Mm-hmm. Questing, Questing Beast. Beast. And the middle one is Lauren Reveal, I think. So, yeah, I don't know. Where does Mason go from here? We know he's a time walk that he's not going to deploy this turn. Looks like an Lee of Old as well, and a, a Death Shadow. Drew a Forest. Oh, okay, Bishop is asking why Elaine took Orvar. Uh, it's not up for a combo at all. It's entirely against the wide range of discard that's going on. Um, Orvar also has had random uh, other benefits there, but it's primarily just as an anti-discard card. Um, so let's pull up Orvar a minute here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she said it was just a discard answer, right? So Correct. But yeah, I mean, it, it's been acceptable in that role. Right. Um, but it also... And it's 23 really body, and it's just been fine for her. Yeah, and she, I mean, she does run instant sorceries, so like there are, there are plenty of other things it can do as well. But yeah, I think it's just there's, there's, there's some decks that are really leaning into the discard hate. Yeah. Okay, so Mason went for the uh, Tropical off of the Lorraine Reveal, and presumably is going to drop the yep, Hexdrinker. Bl- blue Bailoth, but even a little more upside, though, because, like, you... Bailoth, you just get once. This one can get something every time, right? And just keep making tokens, keep making tokens. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's probably... I mean, as a discard right. answer, it's that. It also can make tokens that are copies of uh, lands. Other people's stuff. Yeah, lands or like Moxin or whatever. Right. It's pretty powerful. Okay, so he cycled the Lorien reveal the first turn and now is making this and casting. Good. Okay, so he's pumping up his Hex Drinker. Yeah. And there's a Consider. Mason is considering that card. No, Hex Drinker's pretty weak against Mason. Because you know he definitely has the highest density of answers against it. Correct, but I mean, if he gets it up to the, um, if he gets it up to instance, it's then yeah, then vindicate safe. and pulse become his two. Correct, and to fairy. Right. Uh, well, yeah, and balance. And then if he gets it up to eight, he's yeah, done. no, for sure. Yeah. But we're in time walk. Okay. Pretty unexciting time walk, but necessary when there's a hex tracker against you. I think I see a pulse in his hand. Uh, it's, I think it's a it's it's I think it's it's one of the two black green spells. Okay. It's an oh it's a the evolved yeah. This is what we saw earlier. Oh, yeah, in addition yeah, to that? Yeah. I don't see it. No, it was further down. It may not have been. I think it's a death shadow in the middle there. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a death shadow okay. and then four mana producer. Oh no, treasure cruise. Death shadow, and treasure cruise. It's a forest and a mox. Yeah, Forest Mox and uh, Hallowed Fountain. Okay. 
see flicking cards is so helpful. You can see their whole hand. As long as you lean them in when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that Death Shadow has been active on turn two, like, every time. I mean, earlier in his, a lot of his, he didn't actually get an active in a lot of his camera games earlier, but I saw him beam swim for 11 earlier. <laughs> pretty sweet. <laughs> to Dale Barner. Um, yeah, a lot of the camera games I haven't seen him get that active that quick, but... I'm curious how good his deck is in game one against these red decks when he has just, like, taken himself to four life every game. Right. Okay, there's a Shellock Isle. Mason does burn through his deck fast. Yeah, he does, he does. He, he's, he's counted his deck quite a few times, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's really a shame that uh, the Varner's deck didn't come together, but I think a lot of it is because Mason kind of ate all of these free uh, draws right. from him. And Brandon took the gush, right? There's like a lot of cards here. So 4-4. Okay. 4-4 four, four. Four, four Hex Drinker. Yeah. Uh, there still are Three answers. Eight. And uh, the Mental Misstep hit the Death Shadow, so it never... Oh, nice. Okay, that makes sense. It never hit the table. But there's a Leovold there. I think that's a recall underneath um, Shellduck. Not very good when Leovold's in play. Yeah. Uh, and we have three lands in play, so he needs... Oh, no, he has four lands in play, so next turn the Hex Drinker is active. Yeah. See, so he goes ahead and levels up the last one to four or four. It is nice that once it gets to the middle ability, they can't kill it with an instant in response to the last trigger. Right. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what I wanted Brandon to do the previous game, is just go all in on this X-Drinker. It seems fantastic here. I mean, it's his baby, right? I mean, yeah. Correct, yeah. Well, so I, well, I was so surprised. He didn't believe in the baby. Okay, here's our treasure cruise. No one else can draw extra cards, but Mason can draw three extra cards, I guess. Abrupt decay, land, and land, I think. Abrupt decay would have been great last turn. Yeah. So... So six is not enough it's, nope. uh, for the, the, the kill. But you know... But you know what is enough? Six Ma twice. Mana Questing Beast. Sure. Or just uh, just make six twice. Right. I don't know. I'm like... When I'm looking at Mason's list, I don't see any answers. Mm -hmm. From protection from everything. Like, what is he going to do? No, there's not. Dress down. There's a dress yeah, down. Yeah, dress down's it. I mean, that's like... But it has to be addressed on plus another answer. Right. So, I don't know. I'd go all in. Yeah, he did. And he's got double fetch in hand, so... Or no, fetch, fetch shock. Oh, man, yeah, so he can't do anything. <laughs> he's showing it off. Yeah. And there's a basic... No, no, it's a troll. Troll. Nice, okay, so we get a game three. See, these are the nice games where you just don't have to think that much. Yeah. The game ends quickly. All right, I'm going to go check on the status of this uh, lane game. Yeah. Oh man, we are. I'm gonna jump back to the stands again because it's just a pretty exciting spot we're in. Dan is five two, uh, currently undisputed champion. But if Mason wins this one, he gets tied up. Uh, if Elaine wins her next two, that also ties up. Uh, but Dan is currently on track to be the winner right now. He everything is out of his control. He doesn't have any more uh, ability to decide. Uh, so it's all comes down to what everyone else can do we're, to catch up to Dan. We are sideboarding. Cody is up one game. Nice. Against Elaine. All right. So Cody is up one game against Elaine. That doesn't hold well for this, but it could be Mason versus Dan in the finals. It'd be really interesting if, if Mason and Elaine Why is were out Cody of contention. Why is Cody listed as 3 2 1? Uh, I don't know. Okay. It's, it says that Cody and Brandon tied, but I'm sure I just put it in. Okay, right. yeah. We'll so, swap it around. Yeah. So yeah, Cody's four two. Yeah, I'll go fix that right now. That's fine. All right, so nice match three here between Brandon and Mason. Uh, Brandon obviously wants it for the glory, and also you know him and Mason have a you know fun little uh, <laughs> you know competitive nature between them. And well, but also Brandon, I mean three four is, has a good chance of making prizes. Mm, no, I don't think so. Not with all those four. There's a lot of fours up there clogging okay. right now. So. Okay. But but. But for Brandon's pride, being away, like three fours, you know, matters, right? Like, Cody beat Brandon two zero, oh, right? Uh, yes. Okay. There we go. Now it's fixed. Okay. Chillange fell over a little bit. Uh, for anybody following at home, here's the here's the Chillange. Chillange. 
Okay, so the Zuranor Mystical. Is that a. Um, I think it's a ley line of the void. Yeah, that's the ley line. As well as a few lands and a future site card, maybe, on the left? Oh, and Mason, Mason went for the classic library and hold the mox. Mm hmm. It is a library in the play, though. Second question: How can you get rid of the answer? Because I'm not isn't very good. Which one of the initiatives? Initiative is insane in VRD. So the issue with initiative is it was very much designed for the four-player commander commander environment, right? So in every format that it's um, you know gone in, including Vintage and Legacy, um, it's it's really like they had to rear it in Vintage. It popper. They had to rear it in. Um, it's just in a one v one environment. It's just so ridiculously strong. So. It does have a pretty pretty high win rate, right? Because you really have to plan for it. Uh, I mean, obviously, just combo can sometimes just take it down. But even then, it's a threat because, like, if you got a quick enough initiative stuff, and you're just going to beat them to five to the head with the thing. And, you know, even combo, it can drop it decently quick. Uh, it is... I, I think the second round white plume where it's been going is, is the right play. I, I, I think that it's, it's home. It's just so strong. Uh, so, absolutely, I agree with you. Um, but yeah, it was designed for a four-player world. Right. Well, and in answer to your actual question, I think there, what we have seen is that there is always at one dedicated initiative player, and then two to three players that are otherwise playing initiative. So I think that like, it's fair to say there should always be at least two initiative players at the table, yeah. and the number of cards with initiative printed on them that they play can vary. But there are there is always going to be a couple of initiative players at every table. Yeah. The only initiative card that I have not, I don't know, actually I've only seen drafted once, I think, is the blue rare, which is like the yeah, five drop. Right. But, but I still four drafted. Men are, four, right. four men are less of very good. Right. Right now in this game we're watching, uh, there is a, a library matchup happening. Mason is just playing his lands, playing one card at a time, and ripping ahead on card advantage. So Mason, you know, took out the reanimate package, but the, that doesn't mean the Leyland's worthless against him, right? Like, he still has Snapcaster, he still has, um... Um... Jace. Jace, so it's still, you know, very relevant. So we got a Queller here, so we're just gonna throw the threat against the... Queller takes out the Mystical. Yeah. But yeah, I think Initiative, I mean, the thing that the whole series that I did this uh, last year... I think calls out the fact that initiative is the strongest uh, effect in VRD right now. So yeah, I, I don't think it's like even close to being close. When you see two two to three of initiative cards getting taken in the first two rounds, it's a pretty good indicator. So let's see. We got from Mason's side. He has a lot of things to deploy, and mana is his constrictor right now. But at any point he could. He has the he can come off library. He still is on seven, right? Or is he on six now? Uh, He's on uh, six. six. Yeah. So if, if Brandon can take him one card down, he'll be off library. But as of right now, he's still on. Yeah, I think one of the things with the initiative being so good is that, you know, especially in you know, the, the mid-rangey matches like this, you got to start thinking about how am I taking the initiative from them and can I keep it from them? So cards like Phyrexian Metamorph become really interesting because you can copy theirs and steal the initiative. Um, <sighs> Brandon's going to put him back on the initiative. Okay, so so this is a fun spot where Mason has to decide, am I going to force of negation this time twister, which will take me off my library, mm. dropping me to four cards, or am I just going to say, yeah, okay. sure, yeah. do it. I'll, I'll stay back on seven. I think you still say I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Now, I now he fine. loses, Leyline's one-sided, right? Leyline is one-sided, so he loses his... So, yeah. Well, so, no, he shuffles his hand into his library. Oh, yeah, it doesn't even hit the yard. So, yeah, I think you do. I think you... Oh, Mason are. disagrees. See, I, yeah. Mason's pitching to, to stop it. I feel like when you're this far ahead from Mason's side that you just take it. I, I think I, I took it there, but but you know what? Mason's won three. I have, uh, yeah, he's better than me. Won a couple online ones. <laughs> Not that those are bad. Those are actually really strong. Okay, but. and this allows for Mason to right. free up that extra mana to start grinding. And now, yeah, now Mason looks like it was a pretty good play. <laughs> I mean, it's still fine. Right. I don't know. I guess you can think of a Teferi as its own version of a library. Mm-hmm. You also know that Brandon doesn't have very many uh, any counter spells, right? So. Well, and then, you know, library did his job early on. And well, there's a question base that will. Um, yeah, that's a good way to answer. Yeah, down to one. To to hit Mason for four, and yeah. then also knock the fairy down to one. Oh, Questy Beast! Questy Beast, as no one remembers, has ten million things that it does. Word soup. But one of those big sections of... Remember when I thought this was a lot of text? Yeah. Those were... Nice, That's so funny. <laughs> sweet summer children that we were. 
I like that they, they've lowered enters the battlefield into enters just so they can add more text. Exactly. <laughs> you know? There's an assassin's trophy and a vindicate. We have a preordain happening with yeah. an assassin's trophy and a vindicate. He says, I'm going to leave both of those on top. Yeah. Like, that seems fine to me. And that means that he's probably going to kill a questing beast and keep his Jace, uh, keep his uh, Teferi alive for one yeah. more turn. Has to oh. do it at sorcery speed, though. Yeah. So so good he had to point it at twice. <laughs> exactly. Crashing for two. He's still almost winning the race against his own lance. Okay. That looks like a yeah. land. It could, brazen maybe a gush. it could be a gush. Br gush or brazen. It's kind of an old frame, which would make me think gush. I think it's a gush, because it, it, didn't, it didn't look like it had enough text to be a brazen borrower. But Gush isn't fantastic here. Is that a planes he has as his bottom land? What is that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. The other thing with initiative that I think is really interesting is because it's so powerful, it really, uh, it with the good four mana walkers like Comet and Minsk and Boo, yes. really upgraded the two mana lands and Crypt and made them higher ranked and more dominant as well, right? Because the ability to get that initiative really quick is so strong. So it, it has a big trickle down effect on a lot of things. They also got printed alongside really powerful spells like Lelia and other things that I think have uh, pushed aggro way up the chain. Yeah. And initiative is one of the things that allows aggro to keep going after it would otherwise sputter out. But yeah, just, I think aggro in general has really risen and initiative is a part of that. Okay, so there's a uh, future site card of Dryad Arbor okay. that he's deciding whether to play. That was the future site card you saw earlier? Exactly, yeah. But yeah, Dryad Arbor, not particularly great with summoning sickness. No. But it does allow him to start pressuring the Teferi if he really needs to. I do like that Brandon's taking his time. Sometimes yeah. in these kind of matchups, it can be really tempting to just make it Especially his at this time of day, right? Totally. Like, you just want to get it over with. He's not having the best day of his life. Right. Uh, I think he's doing better than he thinks he is, but right. he still doesn't feel great. I think if you want to look at the most lopsided uh, archetypes, the place you'd look instead of initiative would actually be at Thassa's Oracle. I think that that's the one that d outperforms its uh, its other compatriots in a lot of places. So uh, I don't think that initiative is the best deck in the format, and I think that because people all are trying to draft for it, if ever if somebody got every one of them, it'd be the best deck. But that never happens. Is that a Leovold? Yeah, Leovold yeah, hanging in hand. Forest. Man, Brandon's not in a great spot right here. His land's just disappearing on him. It doesn't feel great. Yeah. And he had to decide whether to use the land or to sack it for life, too, so he didn't even make the life off, life off of the Zurin Orb. Okay, but he has the creature to start pressuring to fair if he wants to. I assume Mason's still going to attack, but we'll see. It got dismembered. Wow. Yeah, Mason loves using a Vindicate as a Stone Rain, and using Dismember as Stone Rain is pretty good, too. Yeah. Yeah, that label hurts. Man. That's... And this isn't a fast clock, but it's a clock. Correct. And, and it's... that Teferi's back up to three now. And Brandon's just stuck on two mana. Yeah. You're really just seeing him getting buried by card advantage here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, are, are there... What what could Brandon hope to draw here? I don't know. I mean, Beast is gone. That was the... One more. There you go. Um, I don't think anything. I mean, the... He can't, Hex Drinker? Hex Drinker's way too... It's too slow at this point. Yeah. He's, he's not going to get there. Um, the Time Twister got countered early on. If he has enough... I don't know what it's in his hand, but maybe time... Maybe Fast Bond. Oh, Fast Bond's in play. He just drew a Fast Bond. Okay. That's a card that... Can blow up, uh, but he has nothing in hand. He's got one land. He just bounced the land to his hand with the thing, but I don't think he wanted, wanted to do the life right now. And maybe he's holding for a crab in his hand, or he just doesn't have anything to cast with it. Right. But yeah, next turn he'll have four mana. Then that's more than he's had before. Uh, there's a death death shadow. It's, uh... I mean, if he if he could play a crystal vein next turn, he could Titania. If he just drew an extra land, yeah. yeah. But... If he draws a land, he can Titania into a crystal vein. Uh, making a 5-3. Is it 8? So even like crab 
and he can't rebound oh, to land. A, there's a death shadow in play now. Yeah. yeah, this is tough. He's pretty far from a Mystic Confluence doing anything. No. Temporal Mastery is his best draw. So we'll see if he gets the Temporal Mastery, but I think that's probably... He didn't take the Corsure, which feels weird in this deck. I agree. He was he was trying to do other stuff this Right. Time. No, that makes sense. The Crystal Vein is very, has really impressed me, though. It scoos as it does. Doesn't do anything. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, but I think I think the Crystal Vein synergies, I didn't see how that would work yeah. until watching it, and it's been very good. What's Vein doing again? Uh, it just sacks for two. Oh, okay. It's a soul land, but you have right. to sack it. But, replay it, right. But you can replay it if you have a Crucible uh, right. plus Ram a Fast out. Bound. It, yeah. Infinite mana. Right, that makes sense. I guess Life Bonded mana. Right. But, yeah, but two at a time gets that gold vein up pretty quick. Totally. Right, right. First land. Yeah, the gold vein has felt okay. Yeah. But not, not anything, not as special as I hoped it would. Yeah. If the uh, treasures came in untapped, it would be ridiculous. Sure. But, I mean, obviously, um, Exile would still deal with it then, because he has to That's die. That's fine, though, but. yeah. Okay. Going to six. Secondly. Oh, it's a metamorph. Okay. Metamorph copying. Death the... Shadow. Is that good? I, yes. It's, it's, his is a little bigger. Yeah, it's yeah. a seven. Huh. Time walk. Um, and, yeah, all right. There it is. That does it. In. I'm going to go check out this other game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he's Teferi's putting a. Uh, third from the top and there's the fist bump okay so we're gonna take a little break while we figure out who's all uh who's gonna be up in the running for the finals and we'll be back in a bit <laughs> 